And on to the details now, Reverend Father Professor Anthony Afobroni has been sworn in as the fourth Vice-Chancellor of the University of Education amidst heavy security. While there's been controversy over the legality of that induction ceremony, following concerns raised by some lecturers at the university, as well as law professor Raymond Atuguba, who says President Akufuado would be abetting an illegality if the induction is carried through. Indeed, it has been. Presenting reasons for his objection to the induction ceremony in an elaborate piece, Professor Atuguba said a case pending at the Supreme Court challenging the removal of former Vice Chancellor Professor Mauto Avoke makes it a travesty to, rule, to the rule of law for the president to partake in that ceremony. As you already know, Professor Afo Bruni was sworn in some few minutes ago by the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, Most Reverend Gabriel Palmer Bako. He becomes the fourth Vice Chancellor of the University of Education. We'll be going live to the place when uh, correspondent Richard Kojo Nyako joins us. But first, let's start with concerns raised in that article by Law Professor Raymond Atuguba. What we'll tell you about those details of Professor Atuguba's uh, petition or his concerns raised in that piece that he wrote. But let's hear from the now the fourth Vice Chancellor of the University of Education, Winneberg Campus, Reverend uh, Afo Bruni. We require that you answer these questions. Are you determined to carry out your responsibility faithfully, seeking the welfare of those who work under you? I am so determined, God being my helper. Are you so prepared as to ensure that the academic work and moral education will be lifted higher than their present standard so that the students who come out of this university will be seen as good citizens of our country, Ghana. I am so prepared, the Lord being my helper. As a faithful manager of this university, will you endeavor to work in collaboration with all your colleagues and to eschew any form of dishonesty in your administration? I will so endeavor, God being my helper. Dear brothers and sisters, you have heard the solemn pledges of Reverend Father Professor Anthony Afubruni, who has been appointed and invested as the Vice Chancellor of this university. Will you now signify your approval? This investiture of Reverend Father Afo Broni there that happened a while ago uh, on the university campus. Well, let's start with the concerns that have been raised in that article written by Professor Raymond Atuguba. So he says that when a change of government occurred in January 2017, a certain cabal, according to him, close uh, 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 in bracket says for lack of a better word that is associated with Winneba saw this as an opportunity to change principal officers of the University of Education Winneba after acting as lawyer for the victims of this move I can only conclude that the only real reason for their removal was ethnocentric so vice chancellor of your fi finance officer Akoli and bearers of similar such names had to go notes that this is not an isolated incident and he goes on and on in his uh, article and i'll bring you more of that but basically he, the point is making is that the removal of these people was basically ethnocentric in his view and he alludes that to the names being borne by these people obviously they they they, they are ever or the names the names suggest that they're ever and he's saying that once the government changed people thought that those persons with bearing those names should not be in uh, position. At the moment, he goes on, I am also lawyer for Vice Chancellor Jisa, uh, Dr. Jisa of the Ghana Institute of Journalism, who, like Avoke and Akoli, bear names that are not quite, quote, right. I must say that the whole enterprise was so revolting, distasteful, and crude that I constantly had mental and tummy convulsions in conducting the cases until I decided to withdraw 
my representation before I was tempted to say things in court that are unprofessional and jeopardize my client's cases. Some people may still go and argue that this actually may fall a little below the professional standards, but this is his belief, which is put together in this article. He goes on to add that after 25 years of constitutional democracy, it is a shameful disgrace that vice chancellors of public universities will be installed and removed based on ethnocentrism. The three foremost institu institutions that the 1992 constitution seeks, institutions of higher learning and research such as universities and for very obvious reasons, interfering with item three above means that we could easily slip into interfering with the others and their goals are constitutionalism and democracy. The University of Education Winneba will today, 17th of September 2018, inaugurate Professor Anthony Broni, uh, Afro Broni as the fourth vice chancellor of the institution. And the concerns that Professor Atuguba is raising here is that that jeopardizes constitutionalism and democracy. The fact that governments change and higher institutions, heads of higher institutions change with government, which actually seems to be a trend here uh, in this country for some time now, especially with the Ghana Institute of Journalism. But those are the concerns that uh, Professor Atuguba is raising. He has been representing these people, some of these people in court who are seeking to overrule that decision. But whilst that case is in court today, uh, we've seen the investiture of Professor Afro Brony. We've also learned of some uh, dismissals, and we'll get more into that. But let me go on the line now and speak to our correspondent, uh, Richard Kojo Nyako. Hello, Richard. Richard, can you hear me? I can hear you. Give us a little bit of a background from the university's uh, perspective about what is happening right now before we get to the investiture and how it all happened today. Well, give you the entire challenge started with one assembly member, Sufi Sufi Paira. Uh, heading to the court, challenging the legitimacy of the then governing council. He said that they were perpetrating illegality, and so the governing council did not have the mandate Everyone to act uh, as the way it was. So a uh, report, uh, report went to uh, Supreme Court of Paira, and then following that, the principal officers of the university, um, the former vice chancellor, Professor Avoke and then the chief finance officer were also dismissed. So six in all. Currently, there are legal battles that are being fought in court. Two Supreme Court cases, two high court cases, and two federal cases at the lower court. Now, these cases border on tribal, political, and some, um, some political undertone. Okay, so Richard, Richard, yeah. hold on. Before you go on with that bit of the information, let's clarify for our viewers. Is this the position of those who are being sacked, or those who have been sacked, or those and those who are in court at the moment contesting their dismissal, or is it uh, the position of, uh, uh, is it the widely held position? Well, the position of the people that have gone to court and those people that have been already been in court is that. They are being intimidated by the university authorities, the current uh, leadership of this university. Uh, they are saying that some of them have been dismissed unlawfully. And uh, you will hear uh, people like Professor Abia Enso, uh, Professor Avoke, um, the former UTAC president, Dr. Samuel Bekin, and other people that mm. are also on one side. So it's a bit of fashion between the Avoke fashion and then the, the one that has just been installed as the fourth mm -hmm. vice chancellor of the university, Professor Anthony Afugoni faction. And so it, 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 it is sharply divided. Mm, it, it's actually the point about being uh, dismissed on political or ethnocentric grounds that we want to clarify. Is that what those that are in court at the moment think their dismissal is all about? Yes, uh, what um, those that are in court they say, but they don't say them clearly that mm. it is as a result of politics. Okay. But if you go back to history, um, some people said that during the time of the NDC, some people were intimidated, they were harassed, they were not given the opportunity uh, at the university. And so this is the time of the NPP, and people would have to also show them where power lies. And so that is where the political undertone is. Okay. When it comes to tribals, um, some of the chiefs and the people in this area say that 
they are not being given the opportunity and the chance at the university when they clearly do qualify. And so there is a mention of a specific club type, and this is the tribe that uh, the former vice chancellor, I mean, comes from um, the Evans. And so they cited instances of about six, seven, eight people that who were Evans that were in the home of affairs. And so these are the concerns of um, those factions, and in that right. situation they are leveling against them. Let's come to the investiture today. When it happened, what was the sort of response uh, from the campus, including from university uh, uh, teachers, from the uh, from authorities there, and students? Well, um, the investiture started uh, with uh, heavy security presence here at the university. Even before uh, the arrival of the president, you could count up to about 100 security personnel that have been stationed at various vantage points at the university. So people were checked thoroughly and there were places people dared not to go because now they have to train them to ensure that nothing untoward happened. There were backed up security plan when I interacted with the security couples that were here. They wanted to ensure an incident free investiture of the fourth um, uh, vice chancellor of the University of um, Education. Now, when it came to the attendance, mm -hmm. you will see clearly that they have had three previous vice chancellors. But the third one, being Professor Mauta Advocate, was mm -hmm. absent from this fun uh, function. And so all the, um, all the references and other things, um, and then everything they did, they did not mention the names of that. There was quite an interesting point when um, the chairman of the governing council was mentioning the names of people, and he got choked. And then he made a specific remark that, uh, I mean, no one can do anything to sabotage them. And so it caused some kind of laughter in the room. But um, the event went on. So it suggests that kind of achievement, that kind of division that is currently in the university. But the, the investiture has gone on smoothly, mm -hmm. and with some success, the president of Kufado has been speaking at this investiture. He okay. says that he is happy that the people have gone through the laid down procedures and within the confines of the law to ensure that they get um, a new vice chancellor. And he has a lot of confidence in the new vice chancellor, Reverend Professor Anthony Afubu. Indeed, the president says that he is the first Roman Catholic priest ever to be appointed vice chancellor of any public university in the country. And so he, the, the vice chancellor currently has the support of the president and they are also going to support him in everything that he does. Interesting. What, uh, there were other uh, speakers at this function except uh, beside the president? Yes, but exactly. What, so, uh, what have the they also been was, saying? Uh, exactly. The first to speak was the chairman of the governing council, Professor Nicolas Sabaka, and he faced the trajectory of their problem. And he said that they needed someone, a skilled someone, strong world to lead the university. And so all that they have gone through, they've learned lessons, and they are going to do things in their right and proper uh, way. And so that is what he essentially said. When it came to the speech of the new vice chancellor of the University of Education, Winneba, he indicated that he is going to govern um, with um, all manner of persons, irrespective of their political color, their tribe, and other places. He said interesting things also about the three senior high school, the fact that the university has put in place some mechanisms, some interventions to ensure that by the time that the first um, people that attended the three senior high school, a three senior um, high school will come to the university, there would be a plan so that they will get some lecture theaters and some accommodation to live in. And so they have procured some pavilions, and one of the pavilions will take up to about 500 and it, it got um, an applause from the president that the university has set itself apart from the others and is doing something to support the children that are coming. Kojona Ko is our correspondent in the central region, bringing us up to speed on that investiture uh, of Reverend Father Afo Bruni, who is who actually from now becomes the fourth uh, vice chancellor of the University of Education, Winneba.
uh, campus. Well, like you like, like he said, uh, we also heard of some dismissals across the University of uh, uh, Education Winneba campuses, uh, including uh, Professor Avier and so who is in charge or who was in charge of Ejumako. And as you heard, their lawyer, uh, Reverend um, Professor Atuguba, these people are being victimized because of ethnocentrism. We'll get into that as we go along.